Hello and welcome to another Blender know-how tutorial. And in this video, we're going to learn how to create water, uh, or a fluid simulation, pretty quickly within uh, Blender and, and get to know a little bit of how to use it. So if we just zoom out a lot around here, you can see it looks like we have a material on this. We actually don't even, we do have a material, but we are using some effects of Eevee and the look dev to kind of do that. So we'll explain a little bit more of what how to, how to get these kind of results quickly, but just to show you a little bit of what this looks like, of what we're creating, should look something like this. So that's kind of what that looks like. It's nothing too uh, grand, but it's something that should give us something good to start with. So let's go ahead and get started. Go ahead and click and make a new file. Go ahead and make sure that your cube is selected and go up to object and quick effects and click quick fluid. You can see that mine probably looks a little bit different than yours. I'm going to quickly fix that so that they should be the same. The main reason for this is because my I I just baked something before. Pretty much it's like a I already simulated something so it loaded the cache from the previous one. But now this is what it should look like on your screen or something very similar to this. To see a little bit more, let's click Z to go into wireframe mode. And you can see that there's a cube inside of this cube. This cube on the outside, or I guess rectangular prism, is the domain. And everything in a domain is, or I guess all your fluid has to be contained within the domain. And this makes it nice for the computer because then the computer doesn't have to calculate the space that is all around it. It only has to worry about the area that is inside here, which is super nice because it can calculate things a lot faster if it does that. So I'm going to take both these cubes and just move them up a little bit so that if I were to look in the camera, the bottom of this, of my domain, the outside cube, is near the center of the camera just so that the camera can see it a little bit easier. You don't have to do that but it just might be easier or if you want to render it later that would work out perfect. Okay and then make sure that if you click on this and you click on the bottom tab which is the physics tab that fluid is selected and the type is domain. You don't have to click on anything just make sure that it says domain there. Uh, we'll be back in these settings in just a second. Click on the in one the error the inner cube and change it from fluid to an inflow. Now an inflow is like a faucet. It will just provide water for as long as you would like it to. And then let's just make I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller so that we have like a smaller faucet. And let's turn the Z axis, which is up and down, to like a negative two. So now it's going to push water downward at the ground. So this, is, this should be pretty cool. Now you can see that nothing's really happening. There's no water. Even if we play it, there's nothing going on. And that is because we have not baked it. So if we go to the domain, you can go down here and your bake will probably be minimized. Just open it and you can click bake. Uh, but before we do so, because sometimes it takes a little bit of time, Actually, go ahead and click bake. We can see what's happening. And if your computer can handle it, you can let it finish. You can see at the very bottom it'll do like, it'll count up to 100%. And if you don't want it to wait to finish, just click the X. Um, to scroll in your timeline, just right click and drag. And you can see that we already have pretty good fluid. Um, this is in wireframe, so let's actually switch from Z wireframe to solid. And now we can see what our fluid actually looks like. This isn't bad, really. This is pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead. I'm going to bring it all the way back to the beginning. And mine has finished baking it, so I'm just going to play and watch it. So, yeah, it looks like pretty good water to me. Uh, I'm just going to go down these settings and explain a couple of them and see if we can clear up some of what these do. So some of the importance, I'm just going to go by the important ones. Uh, some of the, not, They're all important, but the ones that 
you'll probably be tweaking the most. So final resolution, this is the resolution that will that it will actually like render with. This is the final resolution of like you know on meshes when you create like a cube, you can have more vertices or you can have or a sphere, you can have more vertices, you can have more faces. Uh, this is that. It's just how many vertices do you really want in there. And it's not 65, this is just like a number. So you can just do like, uh, you can just increase this and you'll get really high resolution or you can just set it around 100 or so. And depending on your computer, you may be able to preview it at full resolution. You can just do 100 and 100. But it's sometimes nice just to decrease it a little bit so that your computer can handle rendering it at maybe a live FPS instead of a, a slowed down frames per second. So yeah, that's just some ideas. This one doesn't actually change the quality. This is just what you see in your viewport. Um, down here, you, this is what you're going to render. It's going to be your final. This you're going to render your preview. These, So you're linking render displayed with your final and your viewport with your preview. That's all you're doing right here time start and time end. This one's kind of nice because you can tell it to within the time that you have set. So we as default Blender has from 1 to 250 frames. Now in Blender it also has a default for the water to be 0 starting at 1 and 4 seconds at 250 in the domain settings and it depends on how many frames a second you have. If you have 25 frames per second then it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there's actually 10 seconds if you're running at 25 frames per second. Uh, so you can actually change this to go higher or s higher or lower. This is kind of almost like a time mapping. You can actually slow down or speed up your water simulation using this. So if you double if you double how many frames you have or the how many frames you want to render to like 500, so let's just change this value to 500, you would probably want to at least double this to 8. So it kind of works like that. Um, some of the other things you should know in here you should probably remove air, or uh, not remove. You should probably de-click this so that you can have air bubbles. It makes it seem more like water. It also allows splashing to occur in little pieces so that it can actually look like water is being splashed up. Subdivisions will make it lo look a little bit more smooth. You can go in here. You have all these different settings. And most of these you can probably leave the same. You can change different world settings. Um, but once you're done with all these settings, the most important one you want to know is this bake. And you can see how it says required memory is 43 megabytes. If you decrease or increase the final resolution, it will decrease or increase the bake memory. So if I were to put this to 500, you can see it's now 5 gigabytes of, of bake. And it will probably take way longer as well because it also has to write all that. So let's just put it back to 100 to 43 megabytes and it will bake it if I go ahead and click bake so if you're ready to do it go ahead and click bake and watch it do its thing some things to note if you take this all the way back to here you can actually watch and see how much it's already baked and you can see right here the percent of how much it's done as well and this is fairly slow compared to a lot of things you can do uh, but this is just p the part that just takes time. So I'm going to let us do a thing and then we'll return. Okay, now once that's done, you can just go ahead and drag your slider all the way to the left in your timeline and click the spacebar and watch it. So this is what it's going to look like and you can see that it looks fairly well. We're getting some, a little bit of splashing, we're getting some ripples and uh, it looks like water except for this is just a solid view so we don't see through it or anything. Um, I'm just going to hit escape to take it back to frame 1. If you just hit spacebar, spacebar, which you do in like Adobe softwares generally, it will stop it and we just I want to go back to the beginning so I can play it from the very beginning and watch what happens. So next thing 
is we're going to go into the materials tab and we're going to select just a blue that looks like water. And we can even, so you can see what's going on, click on the look dev shader button up here. And actually, I'm going to click this and drag it. And you can see that actually looks like pretty good water right there. Um, the look dev shader, in general, it I guess in just a quick explanation, it adds like an HDR image that is mapped to the world and it is pretty much reflecting off of our material. So this is what it would look like if we had a full scene set up. And if you uh, click on shading up here, these are different HDR image worlds that you can actually select and see what it would look like inside those worlds. So it's kind of cool. Uh, this is something you should definitely use often with a lot of different objects. Uh, the look dev sh um, shading is pretty sweet. So you, this is the studio, uh, let's see what is it called, the studio lighting si setup of the forest. So this is the forest lighting. So it actually looks like real outdoor water and if we just make sure this is set to like a blue you can make it look really blue but if you make it look like a light blue actually we had it looking pretty good there yeah so like this blue if you want the values you can see right here what the values are if you want to just input them if not oh well it's just four four nine six two seven six seven two I mean and a one for blue sweet um, I hope that you've liked this video and I uh, hope that you've learned something about water and the fluid simulator within Blender and that you can create some really cool renders in the future. Uh, good luck with all your creations and check out some more videos. Thank you. Bye-bye.